I bought this thing. It's a dream machine. And a dream machine is, well, it's expensive, that's what it is. A piece of gymnastics equipment that in theory allows you to train to elite skill levels with beginner skill strength. But at over 300 pounds, I wanted to see if they're truly worth it. I should probably mention as well that this video is not sponsored. So in order to help me feel better with the 300 or so pounds that I had to part with in order to test out this piece of kit, then drop a like down below. Right out of the bat, this looked like a complex bit of gear. The company I bought this from had a setup tutorial, but understanding what went well was a bit of a nightmare. Eventually I figured out how to set this all up, but no way was I gonna use this gymnastic sex swing for the first time in a public gym. If I was gonna make a fall out of myself, I would do so in the freezing December cold of my garden first. Honestly, I had no idea what to expect from all of this, so given that the planche is my ultimate dream goal, I figured I'd try that out first. The pulleys are supposed to reduce the force needed to be produced by my arms by about 50%, so it was concerning when the plant was still ridiculously difficult for me to pull off. But it was an acceptable first attempt and so happy with the fact that I didn't bring shame onto my house, I decided to head down to the gym where it was warmer so I could spend a little bit more time playing with my new toy. I essentially wanted to test out two things. How good a dream machine was at supporting with the high-end skills that I eventually want to learn. And also how effective a dream machine would be at supporting with the typical progressions that you'd see in order to get to those high-end skills. Again, I started with the planche and it felt very similar to how a band-assisted planche would feel. The pulley system assisted while leaving a lot for my shoulders to do and I definitely felt that I needed to maintain that forward lean and protraction. This was far from a relaxed position. I also tried it with the front lever as well. As you know, this is a skill that I'm really imminently looking to learn. And I'll be honest, this was a bit humbling. I thought that because I've been working on the front lever for a while, Dream Machine would be overkill, but getting into this position was work. As I mentioned as well, I wanted to see what the regressions of the exercises in order to build up to these skills look like. And I'll be honest, I wasn't impressed. I can do tuck planches and tuck front levers, but on the Dream Machine, it did not feel right at all. And I guess that kind of makes sense. If a Dream Machine reduces the amount of effort that you need to put in by about 50% and these skills fall quite well into my comfort zone, then it's understandable that they would feel a little bit different. Where I was most concerned was when I started to try out the dynamic straight arm skills. A movement like the tuck front lever raise is a standard progression with the front lever but when I tried it I felt zero engagement in the lats and again this kind of makes sense why would the lats even need to get involved if there's also an external force the pulley acting to accelerate bringing the hips up by extending the shoulder I also had a similar problem with the tuck planche raise where I didn't feel a need to forward lean to get the hips up and the forward lean is everything in the planche but interestingly I felt the arms the lats the shoulders the moment I extended the legs my suspicion is that because there's now a weight on the other side of the pulley system the more my arms had to work to maintain that hold, similar to how in a seesaw, the closer the load is brought to the fulcrum, the center, the less effort is needed to move it. I also wanted to try bent arm skills, so I tried the ring muscle up, which felt actually quite great. I think that this being a vertical skill as opposed to the front lever and planche being two horizontal skills, it just made it a little bit easier to get my head around. In terms of the weighted counterbalancing method of using a dream machine, not only did it not feel right, it just felt downright dangerous. The weights didn't feel well anchored, they were just swinging about all over the shop, and understanding how much weight to use felt like a minefield. Maybe I'll try it again one day, but I just didn't want to unalive myself. At the final count, here was my pros and cons. In terms of the pros, the dream machine worked extremely well for the static holds, and also, it worked quite well for the dynamic full versions of the typical regression exercises, so front lever raises or planche lowers. I really did feel these straight on dynamics, and actually the doms I got after these was serious business. I think that that makes the Dream Machine a perfect tool for conditioning if you want to get more volume in. It was also extremely fun to play with. Some of these skills take years to learn and this was a fun twist to the typical tuck, advanced tuck, half lay straddle that you usually kind of get. On to the cons now and there are a few and the first is that it's an expensive piece of kit. A Dream Machine will set you back about £300 and that just feels a bit steep. The second downside is that this is just not a tool for beginners. In fact, I'll go as far as saying that this will do more harm than good for beginners starting out. I think the myth is that any beginner and their grandma could just pick up a dream machine and start planching, but this is just not the case. We need to make sure we have a really good understanding of what the skill should feel like. I've never planched before, but I know what a tuck planche feels like. I know what a planche lean feels like in my elbows and in my shoulders. So I was able to quickly identify what was and wasn't a waste of time. I think the third con is that bands could do a lot of what a dream machine could do. I think for a lot of what a dream machine offers, bands could do the exact same thing. But actually with the full holes, the dream machine felt great. And if you were to do dynamic straight arm work, a band just wouldn't stay in place. So for this, I can understand why a lot of intermediate to advanced athletes would find a dream machine extremely valuable. 
It should be noted as well that a dream machine is far from a shortcut to a solid foundation. Using any assistance to a dream machine, bands or a spotter without an understanding of good scapula and hip position is just a vain waste of time. I'm going to keep trying out the dream machine. I have it. I might as well use it. But if you want to see how I typically build up the strength to work on a skill, then check out this video right here.